So John is asking, in Exodus 28 and 29, extensive details are given about the vestments to be worn by the priests. Is there a parallel to such religious clothing in the in other ancient religions? Thanks. Hey, John, that's a really good question. I definitely I think that's something that would be interesting to dig into. And I did a little bit of research. I thought I'd quickly find, oh, yeah, this religion, this religion has all these same things. And it's ended up being much harder than I anticipated. So um, if that's something of interest to you, I definitely suggest that you, you, you look and see because it would not surprise me because even within the Bible itself, we see a lot of false religions popping up using the the vestments of the holy priest. So we'll take a quick look at it. If we go to Exodus 28, this is where we find a lot of the main components to it. Uh, starting even with verse 1, it's talking about the creation of it. Then we get to Exodus 28, verse 5. It's describing what's called the ephod. So God says, take, they shall take the gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine linen, and they shall make the ephod of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread. So gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, these are very much the, the colors associated with the sanctuary, not just with the priest, but also the sanctuary in general. Each one is a very highly significant color. Um, but notice a lot of religions, you look out there and they might, you probably won't see that whole combination elsewhere, especially when it comes to blue, because the blue is the color very much associated with God's law. And Satan, when he's going to make a fake religion, <laughs> seems to tend to want to cut blue out of it. It's really interesting. I'm not saying that's always the case, but there are some notable times where blue is not a part of the picture. Um, so the priest wears the ephod, it straps down here, and then on it are the stones different stones such as two onyx stones that have uh, so there's the urum and the thumim that would be used for divination isn't the right word but you ask god questions and somehow you will get a response from god yes or no and then a stone for all the different tribes and each one again is a different type of stone uh, we have those now if you go down to exodus 28 verse 17 for example it says you shall Put settings of stones in it, four rows of stones. First shall be sardis, topaz, and emerald. Uh, then the second row will be turquoise, sapphire, and diamond. Third row, jacinth, agate, amethyst. And then the fourth row would be beryl, onyx, jasper. Why am I bothering to talk about these? Because we might see them again later. Uh, and, you know, you go down, then the priest had... Uh, additionally, the um, like a headpiece on it, which would, uh, as part of it, have writing right here above the forehead that would say holiness to the Lord. Uh, very important there because, you know, symbolizing just thoughts of holiness and, and what's on your mind. A lot of religions... They don't go that route, right? The false root religions, they tend to be more uh, asserting power, authority, or power over life and death, and things like that. And here God goes with holiness and holiness to the Lord. So interesting. And then if you think about it, going into the presence of God, what are the angels always saying in there? Holy, holy, holy. Mm -hmm. So that's more or less a really quick, rough rundown of the... Uh, of, of the garments and this is all woven of uh, fine linen and all of it would be linen except for like the gold because there's that rule of not mixing and matching different types of uh, materials now if we flash forward to the book of ezekiel also chapter 28 so ezekiel 28 starting at verse 13 we we come to this lament for the king of Tyre. And when you go through and you read it, we realize it's really talking about Lucifer, Satan, uh, this, this extremely powerful being who stood in the presence of God. Now, let's look at the description. It was really fascinating. So verse 13 of Ezekiel 28, God says, you were in Eden the garden of God, 
Every precious stone was your covering. Sardis, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. So even you got some music and all, which also is something that you can see associated at times with the sanctuary. There was music there. So here, and, and it goes on, you were the uh, anointed cherub who covers. You were the covering cherub. We also see that in the sanctuary. So Satan was very close to God, and he almost seems to have wearing all the jewels that later the high priest wears. So interesting. So to me, if you're Satan, if you were kind of this very high up position, almost like priest role in heaven, Aren't you going to have a lot of knowledge of how these things work and you're going to be in a great position to make a lot of fake religions when you're trying to steal people away from God and deceive them and distract them? So Satan is not necessarily going to start completely from scratch and make something totally different. He knows the real thing and he'll make lots of counterfeits that might at times look very similar, follow some of the same principles. But always all his religions have one thing in common, which never in it are you relying on a God of love providing you salvation through grace. You're not going to find that in any other false religion. And usually you have the priest who very much assumes the role of controlling your fate. It's the priest who, who will give you salvation, the priest who can decide whether you get saved or not. And that, again, is very much... Uh, a, an aspect of Satan where he's going to be wanting to put division between you and God. So sad. So I mentioned there's also some fake uh, garments popping up in the Old Testament. We see this, for example, in Numbers. Uh, oh, so sorry. Uh, judges. It happens twice in Judges. So Judges 8.27 it says, then Gideon made it into an ephod and set it up in his city, Ophrah. So Gideon, this is, you know, after he has a tremendous battle, he makes an ephod. He is, I think, of the tribe of Ephraim or Manasseh. So he was not of a Levite. He was not of the lineage of Aaron. And he was not then qualified to be wearing the you know, one of the key elements of the priestly garb. And here he's doing that. I think this is sort of a sign that he wasn't so perfect. He, uh, the so, sort of a stumbling by Gideon. And then we see in Judges, Judges 17, 5 says, the man Micah had a shrine and made an ephod and household idols. So again, ephod is a thing. They're, they're doing it. They're even have idols. So, I'm not surprised because even we see in the Old Testament people making ephods and making similar things to the priest. If we look around, we're going to see that, I think, historically in other religions, too. So that's that's my nutshell. I'm sorry I can't say, like, this religion you know of is this way or that way, but... I, if we dig deep enough, I think we're going to see a lot of similarities. There's going to be certain aspects that are similar, but uh, where it matters, I think you're going to see very key differences. There's so so much you can learn by what does Satan not incorporate into his religions that you're like, okay, that's something important that I really need to pay attention to with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Satan really makes it, you know, he he really tries to take elements of the truth and try to put this like shroud of, you know, truth up there. But then if you go mm -hmm. in deep, it's like the stuff that matters the most is missing and is is mm -hmm. contrary and, and opposite of what is wanted. So like what, you know, what what God's plan is. So, yeah. Deception at its finest. Yeah. And I have to say, I was trying to do some research of e even like Baal worship and the Babylonians. And it's interesting. A lot of them go with garments that are based on if you go back to Baal, it's of a fish. And they believe that Dagon or Baal was like a fish god. 
and which makes sense. You're dealing with people after the flood. So everybody's sort of traumatized over water um, and, and realizing water is a, a big thing. So Dagon is the fish god. And then these priests are wearing like these fish miters. And then it's interesting where you look at even there's priests, bishops, people like that today who are wearing very similar headdresses as what uh, the priests of Dagon would use. And um, even sort of the the censors that are used at times by uh, religious today also very similar to Baal worship that lives on very, very much even to religions today. Yeah.